Hello, and welcome to another installment of Star Citizen. I went out on one of those missions to retrieve a box from a wrecked spaceship. In my old trusty prospector, of course. Old prospector. Here! And this is what happened. After that, I decided it's only going to happen to me once. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I know this saying. It was invented in Russia. I decided I needed to beef up this little prospector. The default weapons on the prospector were distortion weapons. And although they might be okay at disrupting the other ship, they weren't going to put out any damage at all. So I looked at the weapons, I started there, and I saw that it was two size one weapons, but also mounted on gimbals. Now on some other ships, you can actually take off the weapon and the gimbal, and that will increase your weapon by one additional size. It's as if the gimbal occupies one of the weapon sizes just by being there. I got a little bit excited about this, thinking I could put on two size two weapons. No, you can't, don't even try. But that turned out not to be the case. They were already on there holding a size one weapon, so I was only going to be able to replace it with a size one weapon. So I chose these Neutron Auto Cannons. Now they fire slowly, but supposedly the impact when they hit is pretty high, and I really felt I needed to go for the highest amount of damage per actual landed shot that there was. I really don't know why I thought that. I find your argument strewn with gaping defects in logic. But that was my strategy. I think you're going to be happy with that. To power those new weapons, because they apparently do draw a little bit of power, I was going to need a beefier power plant. Now what I had was pretty bottom line. It was a Class D Trommel in the industrial class. Now the industrial components are pretty hardy. They'll last a long time without needing repair and so forth, but they're not the highest performance, not the highest output, and it was a Class D. So I went looking around. The best size 2 power plant that I could find was this Maelstrom. It was a Class C, so it was one class better, and it was military, which just by the fact it was military was also going to give me increased performance. So I put that guy in. I was also, of course, not very happy about my shielding. It seemed like it only taken a few shots to take me down. I am aware of that, Doctor. So when I looked, I had this Bulwark size 1 industrial grade C shield on here. I was able to find a really great shield, probably about the best I could hope for. It was a military class grade A shield. So I plugged that bad boy in. I also thought about upgrading the coolers because with this additional power of draw on the shields and the weapons and the power plant and everything, I might need more cooling, but I had pretty decent coolers already. I had class B industrial ones on there, the Snowfall, and I don't think you can even buy those in the store. Those come rather exclusive with the ships and maybe even only with this Prospector right now. So I decided to try the Snowfall cooler that I had and just see how that would operate. If I had problems, then I would upgrade it. All right, with the Prospector properly pimped out for combat, I took it out for a test. Decided I'd start easy. I went for one of those missions where you destroy the probe, a nice stationary target. I just wanted to see how these neutron auto cannons, if they would penetrate the shields, blow up that little probe, how long it would take for me to kill it, if, was I gonna have overheating problems, that sort of thing. I went out, found a probe, and sure enough, I was able to destroy it fairly handily. Not too much different, I felt, than with my Cutlass, just using a couple size 2 Badger repeaters, actually. Yeah. 
But now it was time. It was time for my revenge. Let's make sure history never forgets the name. Prospector. Got out. It was pretty straightforward enough. I picked up the same kind of mission I had before, go out and collect a crate from a wrecked ship out there, and I knew that a ship would come along. I was hoping it would be one like I had run into before. But sure enough, it was me versus the Cutlass. It was a nice little battle. I took some shots. I was landing some shots. And actually, fairly handily, in about three minutes, I destroyed the Cutlass. I felt pretty good about that. I felt like I had outpunched my weight class with this little prospector and its two size one weapons. Feeling emboldened, I was like, well, what else can the battle prospector do? Let's show them what they're up against. So I went looking for another mission. I decided to pick up a bounty hunter mission. And I went out and I found a buccaneer. Well, the buccaneers are actually a little bit of a pain in the neck. They're like little flies. They're pretty small and so hard to hit, but I took it on anyway. And sure enough, in just slightly over two minutes, I took him down. So I thought, well, that's pretty good. You have your moments. Not many of them, but you do have them. And I checked out my prospector. What's our status? I really hadn't taken much damage. So I took another bounty mission, and I found another buccaneer, and I took it down and another bounty mission, and another buccaneer, and another buccaneer. Four bounty missions in a row, plus the cutlass I had destroyed, and my ship was actually still doing pretty good. I thought, well, what else can the battle prospector do? Looks like we're going to find out just how much of a pounding this ship can take. So I picked up an ECN mission. I figured, all oh, right, there's gonna be at least two or more ships on these guys that I have to take out, and sometimes you get some hard ones out there. It was a little bit more difficult, but bam, two ships destroyed and I was still alive. So I had taken on a Cutlass, four Buccaneers in bounty missions, and two more ships on an ECN mission, and I was still alive. I was feeling pretty good about this. The little prospector had been able to take some shots and dish out some damage, enough to destroy other ships. Now, I'm not saying that the Prospector should now become your dedicated fighter. It's not that. It's just that it opened up the window to some more gameplay with the Prospector. I was able to pimp out this little Prospector and make it at least capable of defending itself and taking on some small battles. That was really cool. If the Prospector is your one ship you've invested in in the game, you want to try to get the most out of it. And now you're not locked out from some of these at least lower level type fighting missions. I'm actually going to keep all this weapon equipped on the Prospector. I thought, why not just keep it a little bit better shielded with a little more capability of firepower. You never know when you're going to need it. And I had bought a second set just to have it around, just in case. I see your point, Mr. Worf. I've also been really happy about the growth of this channel from the people that are watching you all, the comments, the subscriptions, the likes. It's been really great, really encouraging, and to celebrate that, I'm giving away a gray cat. Yes, it's just a gray cat, but it's a pretty cool little ground vehicle. And being smaller than the Cyclone and shorter than the hover bikes, it fits into a lot more ships. And you can actually make a little bit of money with this thing. I've got a video out about that where I actually used it to help myself and do things and increase the economy. Maybe you can even use it to carry the harvestable boxes with FPS mining. Who knows? If you'd like a gray cat, just type in the word gray cat to any of the videos I publish, including this one, between now and the end of November, and I'll be doing the drawing at the beginning of December. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you like what you saw, and I'll be talking to you later.